Hey guys, I picked up a pair of these 18 terabyte white label drives. We're gonna take a look at what exactly they are. I'm going to show you how I provision new drives in my Chia rig. We're gonna take a look at some cost calculations. For those of you who are more interested in the battery videos, I do promise this will be the last server related video for a little while. Uh, and then we'll get back to some batteries. I don't know if we'll do some reviews or I'll figure something out here. So I picked these up from a uh, digital spaceports store. I think his name is Jared. He's a popular YouTuber that does a lot of sysadmin enterprise server related things. They were $209 a piece before shipping and that's a fantastic price for an 18 terabyte drive. But there's a catch. They are generic white label drives. So what exactly does that mean? My first thoughts are, why are they so cheap? Why is there no brand name behind them? And are they going to last or destroy my data? So I saw he posted a couple of things on Reddit after somebody shared a link to his store. And the way he explained it was that large companies who are building large infrastructure, I don't know if it's like a cloud, a cloud provider, something like that, will go out and purchase a large number of hard drives. They'll then sample that lot randomly and see if the drives they pull meet their specifications. If they do not, they'll return the entire lot back to the manufacturer. The issues can be anything from cosmetic, like dings, dents in the case, scratches, torn labels, bad firmware, actual mechanical issues. And of course, once they're returned, the company can't sell them as new. And I suppose that makes sense to me as to why they're being labeled like this, white label. But it makes me wonder why the company simply doesn't sell them as remanufactured, recertified, repaired, whatever they call it. Because all of these big name companies have those recertified drives out there. You can typically buy them a little bit cheaper than new drives or uh, a lot of times you'll get a recertified drive if you do like a warranty exchange. You'll ship back your dead drive and you'll receive a recertified drive of the same type or the same size at least. So these are listed on their website as the Seagate Exos X18 18 terabyte SAS drives. And from what I can tell, uh, these drives are identical to the Exos X18 in every way in terms of the front, looking at the back, uh, the, the rounded corners, the rounded type corners these drives have, the crimps on there, the same round sticker, even down to you see there's like a little uh, diamond shape here and a square shape down here I see on the Exos drives. So it does appear to be the same, the same case, at least the same enclosure as far as I can tell. All right, so I've got both of these drives installed in the Supermicro Caddies. We're gonna go ahead and put them into the servers. Uh, I'm going to slide in the first drive, wait approximately a minute or two, and then slide in the second drive. Uh, so while that one's spinning up, the way these are numbered are I have uh, JBOD1, JBOD2, and JBOD3. And then I have from left to right, bottom to top, disc one, disc two, disc three, all the way to disc 16. And then if you remember, I have eight drives on the inside of each of these enclosures, and those are drives 17 through 24. If I'm looking at uh, this disc right here, this will be disc 0102, and that means it's in uh, JBOD1 and slot 2. So if I look down here, this last disc I have to slide in, this will be disc 0308, because we are in JBOD3, and that is slot number 8. And you can see the light flashing as it spins up the disk. <clears throat> so I'm going to do an ll-tr slash dev slash sd star. So we can see the two disks I installed just now are dated September 10th at 1240 and 1241. Now this is why I wanted to wait a minute or two between disks, uh, because now I know that sdbz is in slot 7 and sdca is in slot 8. Otherwise, if I had stuck them in together, they'd have the same timestamps here and we wouldn't know which one was which. Let's check the disk attributes first here. SmartCTL-all slash dev slash sdbz. Uh, so here is the disk number, OOS18000G. So I guess that means 18,000 gigabytes or 18 terabytes. I was expecting it to show the original Seagate model number here, so that's kind of surprising. Uh, but we see it is 18 terabytes, 7200 RPMs. Smart status says OK. One hour and 53 minutes of power on time. So this is a brand new disk, at least in terms of what the firmware thinks. Manufactured 29th week of 2022 and it has zero grown defects. Uh, so let's check the second disk that was SDCA. So we've got the same model number, 18 terabytes, 7200 RPMs, smart is okay. Power on time is four hours and 50 minutes. So this is a new disk as well. 28th week of 2022 and zero grown defects. Uh, now, if I were going to use these disks for any actual data, I would probably run uh, bad blocks on them just to do a surface scan, but uh, I'm not really interested in doing that right now and spending the time on that. We're just going to fill it up with plots. So again, slot seven was SDBZ, parted, part, and that is Chia plots. That was uh, JBOD3, so 03, and slot seven, 07. 
ext4, 0% to 100%. Oops, make label GPT first. And then we can make the partition. All right, so quit. SDBZ1, MKFS-T, ext4. So by default, uh, ext4 reserves 5% of the file system. You can see that here, 5%. Uh, we don't want that reserved, we want to free that back, so tune2fs-m0, 0%. And I also reset the drive label as well, chia plots 0307. So now we can do blk id to get the block id. There we go, chia plot 0307. So I copy the uuid and then I do mount uh, slash dev slash disk slash buy uuid. Since there are so many drives in the system, we cannot rely on this drive to always be SDBZ1. So that's why we're going to refer to the partition by the uh, UUID identifier. And we're putting that in slash MNT slash Chia slash Chia plots 0307. So now if I do a DF dash H, we can see Chia plots 0307. It is 17 terabytes formatted capacity. And we'll do the same with the second drive. Okay, so now you can see I've got the second drive done. I've got two drives here, 07 and 08. So now I'm ready to start filling with plots. Um, so what I want to do is calculate the optimal number of plots that I can fit on this drive. So I actually wrote a script that handles this calculation for me. So I'm going to do DF. I don't want the dash H flag because I want to know the number of 1K blocks. So we know that on drive 0307, we have uh, this many number of 1K blocks free. And this is a PHP script, so I just do PHP, PHP plot calc, and then I paste in the number of 1K blocks that was shown from the DF, press enter. And now this is showing me the amount of K32, 33, and 34 plots I can fit on that drive to make best use of the space. Now I do have the script only showing results that have two or less K32s because I don't really plot K32s anymore. I'm exclusively plotting 33s and 34s. So this option is showing only 0.37 gigs free, but I'm going to ignore this one because that's not a lot of wiggle room. And what happens if I try to fill it this full is there's a chance I'll run out of space and I'll be a few, you know, megabytes short to fit the last plot. And that's kind of frustrating. So. I usually try to stick around one to two gigs free. So I'm going to go with this option here that says 2.04 gigs free. So I can fit one K32, 28 K33s, and 25 K34s. So this is the third server I have here, and this is just a very old system. Uh, it's a i7-3770K, I believe. And it's currently plotting K33s on an array of eight one terabyte, uh, 2.5 inch SAS disks. So this has been going for a few days here. Let's see what we have. ls slash mnt slash array. And we're going to grep dash v tmp because I don't want to see temp files. So we have quite a few. Look at all those plots there. So I now wrote a script that simply copies these plots off. And we want to put them onto chia plots 0307. All right, now this does have a one gigabit network connection, but like I said, it's an array of uh, mechanical hard drives, which are currently plotting. So I don't usually see the full 110 or whatever megabytes per second. So we'll just let this run until it chugs through all of these plots. So lastly, we wanna talk about the price of these drives a little. So the drives we purchased were 18 terabytes for $209. Digital Spaceport also sells 14 terabytes for $140. And just for comparison purposes, I also included four terabyte drives for $25 based on some of the prices I've seen on eBay. So we're going to make a lot of assumptions in this particular comparison. Uh, one of those assumptions is that the drives are all going to idle at seven watts. So based on that information, we can see the price per terabyte here in column D, and we can see the watts per terabyte here in column E. So the 18 terabyte drives come in at $11.61 per terabyte. So let's say we want to build a 100 terabyte array. And we're also going to assume that our power cost is 14 cents per kilowatt hour, since that is what I'm paying currently. So in order to get 100 terabytes, I would need 25 of the four terabyte drives. And I would only need 5.5 of the 18 terabyte drives. So we're looking at a comparison of 625 to just under $1,200. And what's interesting is the difference in power consumption. So the 18 terabyte drives would only use 933 watt hours per day, whereas the four terabyte drives would come in at a whopping 4.2 kilowatt hours per day. So after one year's time, our 18 terabyte drives would use approximately $48 in power, 
whereas our four terabyte drives would use $214 in power. And you can see the cost of the Power Plus drives is still better in favor of the four terabyte drives, even after one year of runtime. So if we look out a little further to five years, uh, we can see suddenly the, the four terabyte drives are no longer the best deal. After five years, our four terabyte drives will have used 7.6 megawatt hours of power. So if we look out further to 10 years, we can see that the four terabyte drives are now over $1,000 more in power. Now 10 years is about the mark where I, I hope my drives will last. Uh, I know the standard lifespan for drives is typically a little bit less, but uh, given the type of workload we're using them for, I don't see 10 years being unreasonable at all. Now, electric cost is going up around the world uh, very, very quickly. And I'm at the end of a one year fixed rate contract here. So my price will be increasing in October and I'm anticipating it to go up to about 19 cents per kilowatt hour. So we're going to update this value to 19 cents per kilowatt hour. And the gap widens between the four and the 18 terabytes the more your electric cost is. And let's say I wanted more than 100 terabytes. Let's say I wanted one petabyte of plots. These numbers are just mind-blowing to look at. If I had one petabyte of plots at 19 cents per kilowatt hour, the four terabyte drives would be almost $30,000 in electricity compared to just 6,400 for the 18 terabyte drives. So that is a significant amount of money that you are saving by using the larger drives, even though they cost a bit more than the four terabyte drives. The 14 terabyte drives are still the better deal. You won't see that increased benefit in power until around year six or seven, because at year five, you can see the 14 terabytes are still cheaper. Now there are other factors that play into this. For example, you also have to consider the cost of your JBOD enclosures. So at 14 terabytes, I would need, let's see, my super micro enclosures hold 24 drives. So 71, or well, 72 divided by 24. So I would, fit, I would need exactly three of those JBOD enclosures, 56 divided by 24. I would still need three enclosures for the 18 terabyte disks. So the cost is the same in terms of hardware, uh, but I could fit more drives in if I use the 18 terabyte versus the 14 terabyte. Again, there are a lot of factors that play into this. It's not as simple as what you see here, but just for a basic comparison, this is where I wanted to start. And by the way, none of the information talked about in this video should be considered financial advice. So I will leave links to these drives in the video description. I am in no way affiliated with Digital Spaceport. I don't receive commissions or anything like that. But just in case you guys want to check it out, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, if anybody else knows any information on these white label drives, I'm very interested in finding out where they come from, finding out more about them. Uh, please let me know that as well. I have eight more slots in uh, number three here behind me. I'm debating picking up eight more of those 14 terabytes. I'm not 100% sold just yet. Lastly, uh, as these drives are filling or anytime, you know, in the, in the foreseeable future, if I find any errors or either one of these drives fail, I will certainly come back and uh, post an update into this video description or the comment section somewhere just to let you guys know what the status is. Please hit that like button before you go. Questions or comments, you can leave those. And thanks for watching.